What's up, .NET developers? Are you just getting started with AWS and you're curious about the global infrastructure that runs one of the most powerful clouds? Well, in this video, we're going to go over all of the infrastructure that you need to know about as it pertains to AWS right here on AWS for the .NET developer. Hey folks, we've talked about AWS, we've talked about cloud computing, but let's actually talk a little bit more about what actually makes up the cloud as it pertains to the infrastructure involved. Well, to start out, the one thing that you want to be 100% clear of is AWS offers a broad set of global cloud-based products using compute, storage, database, analytics, networking, machine learning, and AI, mobile developer tools, IoT, security, enterprise applications, and much more. That's a lot, right? And to be exact, there's over 200 services that exist out of AWS today. And like I said, there are options for all sorts of different services. It pertains to application hosting or storage or databases and many more. All AWS services can be secured via IAM, which we've talked about in a previous video, so please check that out. That gives a really, really strong, least privileged approach to how we actually allow access to AWS services. And finally, AWS services are, some are regional, but some also live out on the edge. We'll talk about the difference between those two as we go throughout. So what's the first thing to talk about are regions. AWS has a concept of a region, which is a physical location around the world where we cluster data centers. We call each group of logical data centers an availability zone. Each AWS region consists of multiple isolated and physically separate availability zones within a geographic area. Unlike other cloud providers, you often define a region as a single data center. The multiple AZ design of every AWS region offers advantages for customers. Each availability zone has independent power, cooling, and physical security, and is connected via redundant, ultra-low latency networks. AWS customers focus high availability can design their applications to run in multiple availability zones to achieve even greater fault tolerance. AWS infrastructure regions meet the highest levels of security, compliance, and data protection. AWS provides a more extensive global footprint than any other cloud provider, and to support its global footprint, the ensure customers are served across the world, AWS opens new regions rapidly. AWS maintains multiple geographic regions, including regions in North America, South America, Europe, China, Asia Pacific, South Africa, and the Middle East. And we talked a little bit about availability zone, but what actually is an availability zone? An availability zone, or AZ for short, is one of one or more discrete data centers with redundant power, networking, and connectivity in an AWS region. Availability zones give customers the ability to operate production applications and databases that are more highly available, fault tolerant, and scalable than would be possible from a single data center. All AZs in an AWS region are interconnected with high bandwidth, low latency networking over fully redundant, dedicated microfiber, providing high throughput, low latency networking between availability zones. All traffic between AZs is encrypted. The network performance is sufficient to accomplish synchronous replication between AZs. AZs make partitioning applications for high availability easy. If an application is partitioned across multiple availability zones, companies are better isolated and protected from issues such as power outages, lightning strikes, tornadoes, earthquakes, and basically any other natural phenomenon that occur. AZs are physically separated by a meaningful distance, many kilometers, for any other availability zone, although all are within 100 kilometers or 60 miles of each other. We've talked about availability zones and we've talked about regions, but what are some of the other infrastructure topics that exist inside of AWS? Well, firstly, AWS has this concept of local zones. AWS local zones place compute storage database and other select AWS services closer to end users. With AWS local zones, you can easily run highly demanding applications that require single digit millisecond latency to your end users, such as media and entertainment content creation, real time gaming. Reservoir simulations, electric de electronic design automation, and machine learning. Each AWS local zone location is an extension of an AWS region where you can run your latency sensitive applications using AWS services such as Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud, Amazon Virtual Private Cloud, Amazon Elastic Block Store, Amazon File Storage, and Amazon Elastic Load Balancing in geographic proximity to end users. AWS local zones provide a high bandwidth secure connection between local workloads and those running in the AWS region, allowing you to seamlessly connect to the full range of in-region services throughout some of the APIs and tool sets. Also, we have AWS Wavelength, which enables developers to build applications that deliver single-digit millisecond latencies to mobile devices and their end users. AWS developers can deploy their applications to Wavelength zones 
AWS infrastructure deployments that embed AWS compute and storage services within the telecommunications providers' data centers at the edge of the 5G networks and seamlessly access the breadth of AWS service in that region. This enables developers to deliver applications that require single-digit millisecond latency, such as game and live video streaming, machine learning inference at the edge, and augmented and virtual reality, or AR and VR. AWS Wavelength brings AWS services to the edge of the 5G network, minimizing the latency to connect to an application from a mobile device. Application traffic can reach application servers running in Wavelength zones without leaving the mobile provider's network. This reduces the extra network hops to the internet that can result in latencies of more than 100 milliseconds, preventing customers from taking full advantage of the bandwidth and latency advancements of 5G. And because of that, we have over 410 points of presence between edge locations and caches. So it's really, really valuable to showcase some of the great options that you have as it pertains to access. And finally, we have AWS Outposts, which bring native AWS services, infrastructure, and operating models to virtually any data center, co-location space, or on-premise facility. You can use the same AWS APIs, tools, infrastructure across on-premise and the AWS Cloud to deliver a truly consistent hybrid experience. AWS Outpost is designed for connected environments and can be used to support workloads that need to remain on-premise due to low latency or local data processing needs. And because of that, we have all sorts of options as it pertains to the global infrastructure for AWS. I hope this was helpful and I really want to hear some of the different application concepts and scenarios that folks can build with some of these tools. So please let me know. Be sure to like and subscribe. Tell me what you like about this video and be sure to watch this and we'll see you next time on AWS for the .NET developer.